If you've wanted to know what it's like fearing for your life, Kurba, shit, get lost in an Eastern European swamp, experience a Slavic breakfast firsthand, then boy, do I have a game for you. Into the Radius is a single player VR survival shooter developed and published by an Estonian studio, CM Games. It is available at a reasonable price of 25 quid, 30 bucks, or 110 Israeli new shekels, which puts it a bit on the higher end of the price spectrum. Into the Radius, despite being constantly compared to Stalker, is not based on Stalker, but rather the Arcadian Boris Shugatsky book, Roadside Picnic. Which is also the book Stalker is based on, but that doesn't really matter. I feel it's only fair to treat the game as a finished product, as the devs stated that they're working a sequel. 1987. An asteroid hits the Soviet mining town of Pechorsk, spreading radioactive debris all over the place. The Russian government sends in troops and unsuccessfully tries to rescue workers who'd eventually succumb to radiation exposure. The helicopter that was sent to fly over the site disappeared without a trace, and all of the satellite imagery came back distorted. Thus, the area is quarantined to prevent further loss of life. NATO sends in troops to the zone. Skirmishes between Russian and NATO troops begin. Uh. I got myself in a firing line between NATO and a squad of Russians in the woods by the rail bridge by the Kolkas. Gotta get back when the dust settles and check their jeeps. The United Nations Pechorsk Special Committee is established as the global economy enters a recession. First, survivors show up, but their biology has been altered. They start suffering from simultaneous organ failure the moment they leave the radius. The radius is confirmed to cause memory loss frequently found within the explorers. A click and three loud pops as rounds tore right through me. The dying wasn't so bad, it was the void that scared me. I waited for white light or a stairway into the fire, but they didn't come. come Instead, Try to touch I heard the voice of a girl, just seemingly coming from everywhere. She begged me to find her, and before I could even answer her, I was awake in Vanna. Stop. Authorized personnel only. Raise your hands above your head for identification. Greetings, Explorer. This message is to remind you that you are the UNPSC field officer aiding our research of the Pechorsk radius anomaly. Congratulations on your contract extension. Your security level has been reset to zero due to long-term absence. Please proceed to your room and continue the missions. We are hoping for complete cooperation. The enemy visuals are consistent with get repetitive. Fragments are your standard zombie-like enemy. The only thing that makes them unique is the fact that if you do enough damage they transfer into a core, which if you don't destroy will make the fragment come back at full health. They are not really a threat unless they come at you in a group. Their weak point is their core, so just try to shoot center mass. Phantoms behave like fragments. Mine is the core part. They are transparent, making it really easy for them to sneak up on you and give you a heart attack. Their weak point is in the same place as the fragments, so just try to shoot center mass. Seekers are actually terrifying. Once you're spotted, they will relentlessly chase you down, and if they get close enough, start shooting vectors out of their mind. Just try aiming for the head, you will be fine. Spawns are annoying. Mimics are anomalies equipped with guns. They have a wide selection of weapons, and they're probably one of my favorite enemies. It's the closest thing to a human you will see, unless you count your own corpse. With so many different variants, they're extremely dangerous and versatile. The Mimic Marksman is extremely capable of pinning you down, killing you the moment you poke your head out of cover. You're a fucking fed! You, you don't exist! You're not real, you're a fucking fed! <laughs> The Mimic Commandos are absolutely brutal in close quarters. Equipped with MP5s, they will rapidly close the gap, forcing you to engage them at short ranges. 
The mimic scouts and gunmen can suppress you with automatic fire. Ah! He had seen me. And the mimic policemen are just there, I guess. They are all weak to headshots. Slider, a tall unique enemy that moves by teleporting and can almost one-shoot you with their melee attack. They are distinguished by their huge halo, their skin is smooth and gives them a fluid look, which looks really cool when they teleport. The easiest way to take them out is with a headshot, exploiting the fact they're stunned after a teleport. And the BTR. Oh, oh, fuck! Okay, it has seen It has no weak points, no way to do consistent damage to, it has no knowledge of mercy, however what it fucking has is a 40mm cannon that will shred you and everything you love. You can try to escape it but it will continuously chase you down while harassing you with its cannon. Oh by the way that's not the only thing you need to watch out for, be mindful of anomalies. Rifts are invisible enemies that can only be revealed with an anomaly scanner. They don't move or attack the player, respawning dead enemies instead. Easiest way to spot these is by listening for their cries. The reflector anomaly will fire back any object that falls into it, in the direction that the object enters from, and this includes probes. You just need to be on the lookout for pulsating spheres, and you'll be fine. Black grass anomalies only appear indoors in darkened areas and can be removed using a light source. Webs are fucking cruel! Shock anomaly is random electric static on the ground or in the air. They will destroy your probe with 10,000 volts of electricity. Distortion anomaly basically causes your very atoms to rearrange themselves. Just, just use probes, it's free. Haze anomalies are just clouds of poisonous gas that are now stationary. The stationary ones hide expensive artifacts that you can go searching for with a gas mask. Just just use your eyes to spot those, honestly. Stomper anomalies can be spotted by the stomping sound they make. And the resulting kick up dust. You should try running away because the anomaly will damage you and set up grenades in your pouches. The world is split into four distinct zones. Parvomie Root. The first accessible area, it feels barren and small, but features some cool central points like the train station and the supply depot. Bolotki village, as the name implies, is a village by the swamp. The other points of interest are the crash MIA and the construction yard. Pobieta factory is the most urban area, it features a canyon and a lot of industrial buildings. Kolkos area is probably the coolest one to explore. It's the coolest you get to the radius, giving you a very distorted sense of time. There is a train depot in the north and a huge village in the south. The areas are littered with loot you can pick up. But why would you do that? Why not just beeline to the mission? I got discouraged from scavenging pretty quickly at first. When I saw the Spectre's machete for the first time, I got actually excited for exploring. Expecting to see some rare gun you can't get from the store. But I was left mostly disappointed. You can get exclusive stuffs like the PPH drum mags and shotguns that since got replaced in the store, only in the radius. Then I developed a gambling addiction. I mean, I discovered loot crates. They're really hit or miss. You'll find there's something really good or just straight up useless in those, but at least you can sell it for a bit of profit. There are also stashes, you can find notes around the map hinting at locations of secret weapons or ammo stashes. I just sort of embraced exploring for the sake of exploring, seeing cool shit and learning the lore, which mitigated the fact that the loot was lacking more often than not. 
into the rages isn't Stalker. If you can't expect me a VR Stalker game, you'll be disappointed, frankly. Oh, by the way, the game lets you comfortably carry two guns. This regard that advice and care how much you want to. For example, I managed to carry five back to base. The gunplay is amazing, the guns have great handling, feel punchy. Oh! That's... That's why you don't keep guns. <laughs> and the care put into guns is really visible. Your guns interact with physics, meaning you can rest them on object to stabilize them, although it's wonky at best. The guns can be freely customized and upgraded, with so many different size and attachments, the general rule is, if it sits, it fits, regardless of ethics and morals. Your rifles have durability, and if it goes down, your weapon will have a bigger chance to jump or misfire. So how do I repair them? You take out your old trusty toothbrush, toilet paper and a ramrod, and start screaming like you're an underpaid Eastern European migrant working a cleaning job. No, grab some toilet paper from the stash and put some on a ramrod and repeatedly shove it down the bar and... Ta-da! As good as new. Hell, even the ammunition goes off when damaged. American players will be satisfied as the NATO arsenal has an okay selection of guns, ranging from small 9x19 handguns. Hey you! Stop resisting! To modern guns like M41. Hey, 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 look at me, I'm American, haha. <laughs> what the fuck is a kilometer? Albeit they feel out of place, the M4 is pushing it. So the most modern USSR standard rifle is the AK-74M, but it's not something an ordinary player would complain about. There's a great selection of USSR firearms, anything from World War II classics like the Mosin to more modern guns like the AK-74M and Tiger 12. Even the Vogue underbarrel grenade launchers are there. The shotguns are a great starter weapon, the backshot is way more forgiving than standard rounds and slugs. Having a sniper rifle and an SMG is a bit awkward since you have to pull out your backpack to switch weapons every time. I remedied that by setting up sniper nests and having my secondary at the ready. Although it's easy for an enemy to get a jump on you if you have bad awareness, However, my biggest complaint is the security level system. Security level is the bane of all fun in this game. Oh, you want to buy an AKM so you have a chance to actually stand up to threats? Well, do some quests and maybe, just maybe we'll let you buy one. Oh, you explored areas meant for higher level explorers and found an AK-74? Well, fuck you, because once your ammo runs out, you can't buy more since 545 is security level 3. My word of advice to everyone who wants to use something that they find cool. Disregard the community advice. Who cares the OKP7 is inaccurate? It looks cool. The next part contains story spoilers, so I recommend skipping to the timestamp on the screen. Okay, you've been warned. I decided to skip to the more interesting story missions, Pobiera Factory, Intrusion. This time the UNPSC asks you to retrieve a box using explosives to blow up an armored door. You are kept in the dark, like always, about the why. The main Pobiera Factory complex feels really linear with only one exit and entrance, and it's a bit of a pain to navigate because of the black grass anomalies. The gunfights inside of it are extremely tense.
Once you reach the office and blow up the door, you are rewarded with a silver crate, a Pietro plushie, <gasps> and the mission objective, the box. The box can be put away and requires you to constantly hold it, so I did the only reasonable thing and threw it out of the window. This one gets a lot of critique, but I don't get why. Kolkos Zarya, the Far World Feast. The slider sticks out from the mix and the fragments. It strikes a different kind of fear, a presence of a powerful otherworldly horror. The skin resembling the steel of the BTR makes it look like it's native to Zakir's place. The UNPSC tasks you finding a way to manifest a new Typhon artifact. I decided to bring a special surprise that would make the marksman mimics sitting in strategic position and walk in the park. An SVD rifle. After reaching the village in Kolkos, you stumble upon a scene. Black figures sitting at a table. Investigating the house near the scene, you find a shopping list. Upon placing everything from the list on the table, an explosion erupts and the hard artifact appears. Make sure you don't miss the Pietro plushie in the black car. <gasps> Going back to Vano, you find a note in your backpack. Sasha and Vaya are gone. Killed in the explosion in your own home. The police still has no clue who could dump a grenade at your wedding. I still can't collect myself. The sirens, the officers, the place is a complete mess. Feels as if Berchosk has become home. So some evil power that keeps bringing misery upon us all. Kolko Zarya Kids Playground the UNPSC wants you to manifest a major anomaly at Kolkos Zarya train depot. The site is heavily guarded by armored mimics, the train depot turns into a slaughterhouse with the bullets flying everywhere. Fucking hell! You have to shine a light at the backs of two different trains, which I had done an accident without realizing. Green, put your light in, you will win. <laughs> Once you're done, a train manifests and you can ride it to base, which is quite a relief. Unpacking in Vano, you find a note in your backpack. Another fatality reported. The watchman got ran over by a train at the train depot. Some kids got caught on the site. They confessed sneaking into the depot at night to play some weird ghost train game. The watchman noticed a flashlight and tried to stop them, but fell right in front of the wheels. I wonder what power could move it. The train was broken and rotten there for a few years. I've never met a knight, said the boy, and I've never seen one, or spoken with one, or heard one, but you're more beautiful than God. I wish I could be like you, shining just like you. Pietro's Castle, Ouroboros. So that's it, the Pietro's Castle, the final destination of the journey. The explorer is just like the legendary Percival. Found the hiding away castle, eating to now find the holy grail. The doors of the castle open to the one that proved themselves worthy. The final test awaits explorer 61. Fighting through the catacombs, a sight of sunlight is a much needed relief. Scaling the walls and finally feeling the breeze on your cheek as you walk across the ruins. Yet, you know it's just a mere calm before the storm. The main gate is ahead, guarded by armored mimics. One last breath before all the hell breaks loose. A grenade flies into the entryway and the first shots start flying. The mimics try their hardest to defend a chokehold. All eventually fall dead to the floor. Finding your way up the castle stairs, the sudden thoughts rush to your mind. Fortune has hair in front, but is bald behind. 
Why did Vano welcome you back as a seasoned explorer if it's your first time there? You realize that the entire base is automated from the store to the defenses. Vano is completely and utterly devoid of life, and yet everything is up and running. Even the automated market works. I, I'm just not even sure who's stocking the damn thing now. There's a room with a computer still giving out mission briefings, although I'm not really sure who gives a shit about all of this. Now that you think about it, there is only one voice other than the broadcaster that speaks through the tapes. The few tapes lying around tell me about what's happened since the incident. The empty black spots in my memory are terrifying. Without knowing who I am, I'm I'm not even human, I'm I'm just a designation number. So that's why Vano Base didn't feel like a sprawling hub of activities. Because it's not. How wretched is the man who sees the perfect opportunity and still waits for a better one? You impressed us, Explorer number 61. You made it. All went according to the plan. As you grab the grail, you're transported to another realm. A mysterious entity is calling Katya. The entity explains to you that the radius and Katya never existed. You caused the event just to be a hero and a savior. Katya was made up by you, her memory is merely a lie. However, the entity gives you a choice. Either Katya becomes real and you stop existing, or you can finally leave the radius and Katya will just be a distant memory of the radius. Well... Hi, whore! The dead with the dead, the living with the living. The missions you are given never came from real people. You never questioned the powers to be till the very end. There never was an expedition to investigate the Radius or Pietrisk exclusion zone. The bodies weren't of dead UNPSC explorers, they are iterations of you. You never saw their faces, you couldn't die inside of the Radius as someone swept you away from the sweet relief of death. The Radius is a twisted reflection of Pietrisk. The people you find still exist in the normal world, however, you're the only entity that does not exist yet. And still, your actions are manifest in the real world. You inadvertently shape the past by your current actions. You were behind the wedding massacre during the Farewell Feast mission. During the Ghost Train mission, you activated the train, unaware of the consequences that would ensue. The game's story takes heavy expression for the Percival of Legends. The Explorer 61 is the Percival on a quest for the Grail, Pietro's castle is the hiding castle, the sliders are neutral angels guarding the realm, and you can leave the world of the Fae, the Radius. I, I'd love to explain more, but I am too fucking stupid. Just check the thread in the ITR server. My final score is 8 out of 10. Story is deeper than it first seemed, the gameplay is great, there is an amazing atmosphere, and it's really unique for a VR game. And there is also Pietro. Um, my cons are boring enemy visuals, the security system, which I sort of understand why it exists, but I still felt pretty restricted by it. I've also felt underwhelmed by how little zones there are, and the game feels grindy at times. Happy Halloween everyone, wish you all the best, make sure to check out Into the Radius and thank you for staying till the end. She saw a boat of flowers and felt so empowered by a movie made in Hollywood. It says me to someone's daughter, like a lamb to a slaughter, but honestly I'd still hit it if I could. <laughs> that was beautiful, guys. You guys should, you guys should go on tour. Postscriptum, happiness for you. Free. Hi there, give me a second, I'm so sorry for disappearing, I wanted to experiment my content, and by that I mean I have a drink and I forgot I have a channel.
I hope I made it up with this review, speaking of which, I'm not sure which way to take my channel honestly and what to do, but I'll figure out, I'll figure this out eventually. There is no way I can maintain the bi-weekly uploads, so might as well spend more time on highly edited and more prepared content. Anyway, until next time, take care.